what's about to happen here. <laughs> We're about to go in and see my parents and talk with my mom about my maternal grandfather who grew up in Belton and Furness, England. Oh, I'm Linda Hodges, and I'm from Detroit, Michigan, but we've been here in Tennessee since 1970, so most of my life has been spent here. My father's name is Robert Lancelot Scott and we always teased him about the Lancelot. It sounded like Sir Lancelot. And he, he talked just like you and I talk, but he could talk with a British accent. We'd get him to talk with the British accent. Or then he would say, well, people that worked on the docks, they called them limeys, and he would talk like a limey. He would say, talk limey, daddy, you know, when he would talk. So go and tell yeah, me about you. Father was an immigrant. Um, in fact, I had someone point out I'm a first generation uh, American citizen. My grandfather was born in Dalton in Furness, England in 1911 and immigrated to the United States in 1928 where he landed in Detroit, Michigan. And my mother was subsequently born there in 1943. Uh, my grandfather passed away in 1965. I never met him. He worked on a dairy farm, and so I guess he came to the United States for job opportunities. And I believe he was about 18. We've got some pictures that um, his early license and his green card and that sort of thing. And he had a brother and a sister. They all came here. So he came from, I'm trying to remember, he said Dalton? Dalton in Furness, a little bitty town, I think. I've always hoped that my mom would go back to the town where her father was born. My mom will be 75 in November and doesn't feel up to the travel anymore. But did you ever want to go there? I did, I did, but it's been a little while. I, I had planned to go, actually. Did you? Yeah, you so, I was saving up money. For many years, during you know holidays or Mother's Day, or special occasions, particularly when you know, maybe I didn't really know exactly what to give my mom, as a gift, I would give her money to go into the England Fund with the idea of eventually my mom being able to return to the town where her father was born. My mom has no idea what's about to happen. We're going to land in Manchester and grab a rental car and start driving on the other side of the road, which I've never done. So we're just going to go on a grand adventure and land in this small town and, and see what's there and see who we meet and see what we can find, see if we can find where my grandfather lived, see if we can find some of the places that he might have spent time um, and, and see what life might have been like, you know, had he and the rest of his family stayed. Nashville International Airport, getting ready to fly to England via Boston and Iceland. It's important and interesting to go find out where we came from. How did we get here? Go back to the roots of my family, my mom's family, and where this all started. And with the country and the people and the customs and all the things that make them family history interesting. Let's go find some of that and see what we uncover and bring it back. We're not getting any younger standing here and now be a good time to look in the mirror you can see we're growing older year by year sing over and over soon disappears all of them something so cold, it can't even mean nothing, but no one knows, until we go out there, with open arms, we may never know cold hands, it's a warm heart. Just thinking about how we could go about this, and I had the idea of perhaps, you know, interacting with somebody local in Dalton and Furness to shoot some footage, create a short film, provide, you know, provide a, a video look at the town mm -hmm. to my mother. So I contacted a school in the area. It turns out that was an elementary school. And then middle of this year, I sat down and had coffee with my good friend Glenn mm. just to get some ideas from him and see if he had any thoughts on who I might be able to contact and how I might be able to pull this off. Because I know a lot of people over there. Because he knows a ton of people in the UK. 
as I recall, it was like, why don't we do it? We looked at each other. Can we? I, well, I probably looked at you apoplectically like, you'd actually be willing to go do that? <laughs> Like, yeah, why wouldn't I take the best videographer I know? <laughs> if you I'm want. the only one you know. <laughs> well, yeah, so. Yeah. Give me something to hope for, something to believe. Can you tell me you want more for you and me? Give me something to hope for, something to believe. Can you tell me you want more for you and me? We're in the car, actually. What are you doing on that side? I'm not sure yet. Yeah, this is potentially very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. We know we can clear the windshield. The wipers work. We don't, we're not certain about driving. But here we go. All right. So here we are on the wrong side of the street with Jeff at the helm. <laughs> doing pretty good, except for me <laughs> screaming like a little girl. <laughs> After two hours of driving through the most beautiful countryside and a critical stop at Starbucks, we arrived in Dalton Inn Furnace. I love it. This is a town that my grandfather grew up in. Probably looks a bit different than when he lived here, but this is the town. We're close to the center of town. We're a few blocks from the house he lived in before he moved to Detroit standing across the street from the county police station that was probably active when he lived here. Goodness. I think mom would be sitting in a coffee shop right now uh, admiring this main street in Dalton and just pondering what life would have been like for her dad living here. Yeah, I keep thinking about that. What life was like here during that time, what his days were like. You know, the mix of schooling and working on the dairy farm and who he knew and how he enjoyed spending his time and you know, what this place meant to him and, and what it was like to leave it. You know, what was going on in his life in 1928 that, you know, he, he and his family obviously left this place to go to Detroit and what that process was like. You know, how, how excited was he about that? What was he disappointed to leave behind and how that all unfolded? Isn't that crazy thinking about it? It is. He lived here. Yeah. It was hard enough for us to get here. I can't imagine what the journey would have been. Yeah, it, exactly. And you know, you, you peel that back far enough and you think, okay, I'm standing here because he left this place. That that person, my grandfather, doesn't leave here. I'm not I'm I don't exist. Cheers. So it's Friday, September seven. We had coffee here this morning. Glenn had a bacon sandwich. With no gravy. <laughs> With no gravy. I don't <laughs> We're gonna meet the mayor of Dalton Inverness today for lunch, Sam Ronson. At one o'clock, we'll be back here today for lunch with Sam. Get to learn more about the town. Sam has lived in Dalton his whole life. We get to hear, ask him a lot of questions and it should be an interesting experience. Uh, my name's Sam Ronson. I grew up in Dalton. I've lived here all my life. A few years ago I decided to join the local council. I wanted to, to try and improve the town, see if, see if there was things that hadn't been explored or any way that I could leave my mark on it. You tend to serve one year as deputy mayor and then the following year you typically are voted in as the following mayor. And that's how I became the mayor. Uh, I brought along a book about Furnace Abbey. Furnace Abbey is, the, um, is an ancient ruin in the area. It's it was part of the religious history of the area, yeah. uh, destroyed in 1500s by King Henry VIII and his dis uh, dissolution of monasteries. He decided that uh, they had too much power. Exactly. Yeah. He decided that they had too much power, too much land and influence, um, 
and Furness Abbey was the second most powerful abbey in England at the time. Wow. And for much of its history. Furness Abbey is where Dalton originally came from because the castle in Dalton was built by the monks. Uh, there was continuous raids from the Scottish in those times, in the uh, 12th century. So to combat those raids, they built forts such as Dalton Castle. It was really just a, a tower, a lookout yeah. tower. Um, a defensive <laughs> position, right? A exactly. Uh, you may have noticed that Dalton is in a bit of a basin, but the castle is raised up on a hill and that hill continues all the way down to the abbey. 14th century. <laughs> My name's Anne Solo. I'm a councillor, a town councillor in Dalton and also a borough councillor and I, last year I was mayor of the town for the second time. Uh, um, Sam was my deputy and he did the things that I couldn't do so, <laughs> so now he does them all himself. I imagine your grandfather lived in the flat upstairs. I don't think he, he had anything to do with the, the cafe. It may not have, in his time, been a cafe like that. This is Market Street, number 52. Um, the building is obviously old enough for your granddad to have lived here. The downstairs part, at least, has been changed. Uh, this was a cinema? No, the cinema was there. Okay. Um, this has been a market, as far as we know, a diner well, or I some sort of restaurant? Well, I think it's been something, yeah. Everybody I've talked to who are around my age, they say, oh yeah, we remember it, it was the ice cream shop. So presumably it's been like this for a long time. So his father was an iron ore miner, wasn't he? Correct. Yes, so I don't suppose they'd have been very wealthy, can I say it like that? Correct. Yeah. So I imagine that's why they lived in the flat above. Uh, the shot of the cafe. Yeah, then perhaps right. when there were more children, they had to have a bigger house. Right. And most people at that time rented their houses, especially if they were something like an iron ore mine and they wouldn't have owned their own house. Yeah. Um, so I imagine that. that yeah, yeah. And his father was also called Robert. Yes. And I've got um, the, ma the marriage, is, you know, the re recording of the marriage to Elizabeth Ashburn in 1906. There are about 8,000 people all living here. Um, it was a market, it's less of a market town now, but it was. Uh, it's been a town since the 12th century when the monks built the castle. And then of course, uh, a church followed and houses after that. I like it because it's uh, an ordinary, sensible town. It's not jumped up and full of itself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So they haven't been up to church town. Oh yeah, we'll do that at 10 o'clock tomorrow. How many people have fallen off, say, this month? Well, okay. <laughs> well, how many people go up? Yeah. Oh, so right. Carl Good goes up fish. regularly to put, if we ever have, have to put a new flag or standard on the flagpole, because that's up there. So that's a regular visit. And the last two visits, the last two times that I've been up is because we've had firemen come up. So we've had firemen to do risk assessments. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, right. yeah? absolutely. Okay. So, um, yeah, well, I'm very so ten people is what you need for a full ring, yeah. And do you get that often or do you have to have two um, people? Yeah. No, they don't do two. What we do is do a different sort of ring if they've got less people. Right. So six, you can make a good sound with six. So we'll get to hear so, the bells tomorrow morning? So tomorrow morning you'll get to hear the bells if you're if you're asleep somewhere. <laughs> Will you tell me your name and all? Ruth Crossley. For, for yeah. And you've been... <laughs> yeah, it's, 
What? I've been the vicar here for, uh, for 18 months. 18 months? Yeah, yeah. new, very new. <laughs> to visit uh, Marion and Roy Preston on Lancaster Street, right. who through Bob at the church, uh, I've got in touch with, and they're quite happy to, to have us over oh, and have a chat, because Marion and Roy are of a very senior age. Yes, yes, and they've always lived here. You're walking it? What are we doing? Mm. We're walking really far. Here we are on Lancaster Street, is that correct? That's right. We're on Lancaster Street. 20 That's Lancaster 20 Street? Lancaster Street. Very nice. And we're here with Margaret and Marion. You want to tell That's us a little it. bit about yourselves? I was true? born and raised in uh, Dalton, yeah. 1928. Yeah, 1928. Wow. yeah. Nice. The year that my Margaret's, grandfather left Dalton, you were born. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Margaret was the youngest, weren't you, by far? What? Yeah, I was born in 1930. That's it. And yeah. born in Dalton. Yeah. yeah. Youngster. Oh, oh she's a baby. Yeah. A real Roma we are. <laughs> was there a movie cinema? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, the cinema. The cinema used yeah, to be where the... It used to be is. called the Empire. Oh. Oh. And, uh, Probably some of your first dates were there, right? That's it. There. Hmm. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> What we won't go into them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my grandfather, as a teenager, was a dairy farmer. All oh, right. Was there a lot of that, a lot, a lot of dairy farming going on when you there were younger? In the main street when we were little. And my, my grandfather's dad was an iron ore miner. Did you have any miners in your family? My dad was, um, before I, I was born, he was um, an iron ore miner. Anyway, I used to work at a place called Yarlside, Yarlside Mines. And it was up round past the cemetery, up that way somewhere. Do you have good memories Yeah, as of I Boston? say, yes. It's been, it, to me, I was quite satisfied. I didn't want to go anywhere else. Go and tell the story. Yeah, I was just saying, so, you know, my, yeah. my grandfather left Dalton and Furness in 1928, right? And moved to Detroit, Michigan, in America, where my mother and my father were born and raised, and I was born in Detroit, Michigan. And so we've had the idea for many years of my mom coming back here to see where her dad grew up. And it, it just hasn't worked out. It hasn't played out that way. So <clears throat> instead, I'm here with Glenn to meet people here in Dalton, yes, you know, yeah. like Sam and you, and learn more about the town and get some pictures and video of it and create a short film for my mother who does not know that we're here. But in the 30s, you would have had the depression of the 30s, and a lot of people looked for, were, were looking for work. So in Dalton, there were lots of mines around Dalton. Or, or iron ore. So the big industries here, so it would have been working in the shipyard, yeah. working in the mines, yeah. and farming, I'm assuming? Farming as well, yeah, of course. So I believe his grandfather was one of the, was a dairy farmer. Yeah, and, and, and obviously a lot, a lot of them could probably get two jobs. So I, I'm assuming this is not a big tourist town? No, whereas 10 miles away, there's lots of tourists. It's a shame because I think there's a lot. It's a beautiful community. Yeah. And there's, a, there's some, some of the best beaches you could find. Really? that you made and the help of the people have been. The people here have been fantastic. 
been very gracious, very open, very communicative. They have uh, shown us their town and uh, welcomed us openly. It's been great. Looking at the picture with you and the connections that you've made here in these photos, it's like, who would have ever thought a goofy idea turned into meeting some pretty fantastic people too? Yeah, yeah, some great connections. Yeah. This non-tourist town, and they showed us around. That's right. <laughs> We found it. That's pretty dang cool. It is, isn't it? Let's, so here's the street. Let's go find a number. <laughs> what number is it? We're going looking for 15. 15, yes. So that seems to be largely unchanged. This must be the place. No one home right now, so there's one thing left. My mom with her parents. So, in some way, my mom has returned to Dalton Inverness. Walking down the avenue where we used to play, the house on the corner is still the same today as it was when we were children, innocent. As innocent can be. To be here in this location where my grandfather grew up is, is awesome. It gives me a, an appreciation for family and history and roots, and I'm excited to have had the experience on behalf of my mom. Take me back. Oh. Robert Lancelot Scott and we always teased him about the Lancelot it sounded like Sir Lancelot go back to the roots of my family my mom's family and where this all started the country and the people and customs and all the things that make family history interesting let's go find some of that <laughs> 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 no way! It was not me. <laughs> All right, here we are on Lancaster Street, is that correct? That's right. We're on Lancaster Street. 20 That's Lancaster it. Street. Lancaster Street. Very nice. Sticky toffee pudding. Delightful. In some way, my mom has returned to Dalton Inverness. Walking down the avenue where we used to play, 
The house on the corner is still the same today as it was when we were children. Innocent as innocent can be. Oh gosh, thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why am I crying? Me too. Oh. Yeah. Dad, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> it was the best adventure of my life, oh. actually. <laughs> I might want to go move there. <laughs>